Hey, my name is Jesus Castillo, and in this video, you're going to see an overview of the Ruby on Rails components and how they work. So this is going to be a theoretical overview, but that's very important because the theory is the base, the foundations for practice. As you probably know, Ruby on Rails is the web framework built in top of, on top of Ruby and it allows you to create web applications. And it has a few components that are important to understand before you can actually create a Ruby on Rails application. So main topic number one is going to be routing. So what is routing? Well, Here's an example. When you type something like a slash, uh, Rails has to know what action this is associated with. In other words, Rails needs to know what do you want to happen when a user types this in the browser. So this will be your URL, then a slash. So that's your main page. But this could also be something like login. It can also be something like slash users or something like that. So these are different routes you can have. So the goal, the purpose of routing is to match, whoops, is to match URL with controller action and we will see what a controller is in a moment but these are just examples so for example users could go into a users controller and then this goes into an action because users can do different things right uh, you can register create a new user you users controller create action. Then we have the login, which will be like session controller new, right? So every URL is matched with a controller and an action. And this, the first step when a request comes into your website, the first step is always written. So it, it selects, it's like a distribution center. So that's what routine is, that's always the first step, is matching the URL with the action, what's going to happen when you enter this URL. And if there is not a matching URL in your routes, then what happens is that you get a 404 not found error. And to work with routes in, in Rails, there are two ways. One is to list the routes with Ray routes. This will list your routes. And let me clean this up a bit. Um, hold on. I want to do examples and put that in there. Ah, there. And then this is a list of routes to see all of the routes in your Rails application and their matching controller action. Okay. And controller is going to be the next one. Well, actually, it is going to be model view controller. Okay. Model view controller or controller model view in this case. So let's go back to routing. So routes, with this you print the routes and their associated actions. And if you want to change, add new routes, delete routes, then you use the config routes.rv file. So in there you say, I want this route, this URL, 
to match with this controller. So there is specific syntax for that. So that's row 10. And I cover this first because it's the first step in the request flow. The next step could be the controller. Why? Because the root match URL with controller. Controller is the next step. What's the point of the controller? Where the controller is the, like the director of the orchestra. Okay. So imagine an orchestra. There are the people that play the instruments and there is the orchestra uh, director that gives the instructions to coordinate the players of the instruments, right? So that's what the controller is. It's the director of the orchestra, but of a very particular orchestra, which is whatever group of actions you have. So if you have sessions, you can create sessions, you can delete sessions, you can log in, you can log out, right? have users, you can register a user, you can upda update a user, you can delete a user. So each of those can do different things. So what's happening inside a controller is that the controller is going to, going to work with this other two, the model and the view, to prepare the request, the answer for the request. So what do I mean by that? Well, the controller uh, prepares the, the data required for serving the request. I test that by using these two more components. It also makes, makes decisions like render this page or redirect Render, redirect, or maybe show an error, things like that. So that's the controller. So from the controller, from inside the controller, we access this other tool. Okay, so the model, the point of the model is this, to work is the different is the different entities or objects in inside your application so these things like a user okay this is like the session if you have products or books right or anything else that will be product you will have a product model Let's say that you sell fruit, or you have anything to do with fruit, then you will have a fruit model. And these are the examples of models. So these are examples. And notice these are in the singular form. Even if you have many of, you have many fruits, many products, many sessions, many users, you spell them in singular, that is a convention, is what we call convention over configuration, right? The convention is to make it singular and controllers plural. Now, the model, it not only de defines these entities, but it also allows you to interact with the database. So interact with the database. Specifically in Rails, the way this happens is with something called active record. Okay, so active record allows you to work with the database through these different models. So you can do things like find, you can do things like where, save, right, da this different database operations, you can find something, then make a change, then save it, and that way you update it, right? 
you can create new records and you can also delete records or destroy records. These are the basic database operations. And all of that happens through active record. That an active record, what it does is it knows how to talk, how to talk the database language, which is SQL. So all of these things happen in the model. The model is this layer that's called the object relational mapping or RM that maps between the models, the entities in your application and the actual database operation that you get access to as a model object is to get access to all of the data that you know about users. So if a user has an email address, if a user has a home address or a phone number or anything else, you access that through this interface of the model. Okay, so you will find the user and then you can, for a particular user, you can know what his phone number is that was saved into the database when the user cre was created. So the controller, it prepares the data that's required for serving the request, meaning that if we query the database and then what happens after that is the last step in the request flow. And that's the view, okay? So let's make this smaller. The view is the last step. So the view is the design of your page, is the content of your page. And it's, it uses data from the model. So for example, if you have a view where you display a list of all of your products or a list of all of the fruit that you sell, right? Then that will be a view. So it is the content and design of your site or, or of your particular pages. Typically done, it is usually done with templates. So what you do is you create templates and templates, not templates. And there are different ways to create templates. For example, you can use ERB, which is the default. There's also another called Hamal, another called Slim. Okay, there are small differences, but by default you get ERB and that is fine. So the view takes this information gathered from the model by the controller. So for example, to give you a concrete example, like I said, you have a page, you have a template that knows how to display all, all of your fruits. And for each fruit, maybe you show a little image and you show information, the information that you know about a particular fruit, maybe its name, its color, and things like that. So that's the overview of Ruby on Rails. These, all of these components work together and they work in this order as well. So I put them in the order that they happen. So when you are going to add a new feature, the first thing is, do, do you have a route that matches the URL that you want to use with the controller action that is going to do the things that are necessary to make the page show up? So if a user, if you want to log in, you need a login route which has a corresponding controller action which, which knows how to prepare the data, which means it, it asks the database through a model if that particular user exists that you want to log in as, and if the password matches, right? 
that's how you log in. You check that the user exists and the corresponding password is matching with what the user enters. And then it makes the decision, does it match the, pa the correct password or not, right? If it matches the correct password, then we're going to log them in and we're going to show them one specific view, the view, the page for the login pass, for log, sorry, for the login user, where it says, here is your account, here is your account information, here is whatever, welcome your name, right? This like you are logged in and now you have access to your account inside this website. Like when you're logging to your Gmail account, you can access your emails, same thing. But if the password does not match, of course you don't want to send the person to a random inbox of somebody, right? You don't do that. What you do is to redirect them. You make the decision that the password is not matching. So you redirect them to another page that says, um, sorry, but your password, the password you enter is not correct, right? And usually in Rails, you do this using a flash, what's called a flash message. That's a kind of like a notification message that only shows once, it's called a flash message. And you combine that with a redirect back to the login page. So the user has another chance to enter the password, the right password. So that's at the controller level. The controller decides what view to show and the controller takes, like I said, the orchestra director. So what, like I was saying, for a new feature, you need the route, you need the matching controller, controller action. You need to specify what data you need, and that involves the models. You need to make decisions and uh, this in the form of conditional statements. So if this do that, else do the, this other thing. And uh, what happens in there is either you redirect another page or you render a view. So that's the theoretical overview of Ruby on Rails. Hope this gives you get some base understanding of how the whole system works. So you can actually see this in action when you start coding your Ruby on Rails applications. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, please click the like button for me so I know that you like it and so more people can see this video. If you want to keep learning, watch more of my videos now, subscribe to the channel if you haven't yet, and visit my website, rubyguides.com, rubyguides.com. Thanks all for watching. I will see you in the next video.